Hi, this is Caroline with Caroline's Cause Corner. In today's show, we are going to be talking about a subject matter everybody likes to talk about, alcohol. So before I introduce my amazing guest, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. One, um, have you been noticing that your quarantine intake has gone up uh, over the last few months? And my second question is, have you ever thought about wanting to, to sort of take a look at your uh, relationship with alcohol, knowing in your gut that something needed to change. So that brings us to me introducing the lovely Jen Couch, who is the founder of a new community and lifestyle and program called Sober Sis. Welcome to Caroline's Cause Corner, Jennifer. Jen. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I always say I'm Jennifer without the ifer, so you can call me Jen. <laughs> Tell everybody how you founded uh, Sober Sis. What was the inspiration and a little bit of your backstory? Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you for having me. I love, you know, just telling my story because I think it's, I think it's relatable. And what's so funny is for the longest time, I didn't know how relatable it was because I, like you mentioned, was just kind of living in my own silence, thinking I was the only one that was kind of in this gray area drinking zone. You know, we talk so much about alcohol being all or nothing, black and white. And what do you do if you find yourself kind of starting to, to creep into that middle zone where it's becoming a habit, it's becoming something you're doing on autopilot. And that was exactly me. So in my 30s, you know, I was pretty much the working mom, social drinker, happy hours, activity with my husband. Um, you know, really a storm rolling in was reason enough to crack open a bottle of wine, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> or just cooking. A lot, of, uh, a lot of wine was opened in my kitchen around that five o'clock, wine o'clock hour. Mm -hmm. And I found that in my 40s, in my early 40s, while I was really starting to get into being a mom of teenagers and the anxiety that I felt just letting my kids go and drive and all those things, wine o'clock for me really kind of up the ante. So for some people, maybe it's COVID. They got the quarantinis in there. For me, it was, you know, just being a mom in those uh, raising teenagers, I just found myself really stuck on autopilot. Like I will just have a wine o'clock, five o'clock, and I'll just have my own little party, just have my own little relaxation time because I deserve it. I'm a grown up. It's my time. Kind of the mommy juice culture that's very prevalent out there. But I felt stuck in that. I felt really trapped in what I call the vino flytrap because <laughs> I was just kind of, you know, just kind of circling around the top. And sometimes I'd kind of fall in a little deeper than I wanted to, but I could still fly out. I could still stop on my own. But I felt very miserable in that back and forth tug of war. You know, a lot of people are yo yo dieters. I was a yo yo drinker because mm -hmm. I would take all these breaks. Because see, I'm really healthy also, like mindful, healthy. I'm yoga girl by day, green juice by lunch. And then I could plow through a bottle of Pinot Grigio in the evening on yeah. my own. You know, yeah. four or five hour span, that's just three or four. I'm in Texas, three or four glasses. And um, whoop de doo there goes another bottle. And I'm like, whoa, that is not aligning with who I want to be. So after about five years of feeling very uh, alone in that struggle, because it wasn't almost bad enough to reach out for the uh, resources that were so visible down the spectrum. Right. Um, really part of really how I created Sober Sis was wanting to bring more conversation for women in that middle zone so that we could talk about our relationship with alcohol without labels, without judgment, without the shame, and even without the rules where it wasn't, you had to sign up to be in sober sis, which the word sober can almost be misleading because sober sis is not even a sobriety club. It's more about being sober minded. And so I just wanted to bring in that conversation because it was the conversation I needed and wanted to have for so long and didn't know that there were so many other women that wanted to have it too. Oh my God, this is what I have been looking for because I would say over 10 years ago, I was in the same boat. You know, you were promoting uh, not only, you know, an alcohol-free mind, but also just like slowing down and just being mindful mm -hmm. of what you're doing and what's going on inside your body. And like I said, the science and all of the things that um, 
are not communicated in any other uh, forum. And you are a one-stop shop for, for taking a look at all of the different um, resources out there. And um, so anyway, I'm, I just can't tell you how happy I am to have sober cis on the planet. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of ways to kind of just kind of sniff it out, right? I know people are like, wait a minute, what is this? Um, I'm very active on Instagram. So I would say, you know, people, if you're, if you're a woman out there or man, I mean, anyone can follow me on Instagram and you're just looking for maybe some drink alternatives, some healthy ways of viewing the weekend. So you don't feel like, oh my gosh, here I go again. I don't really want to drink all weekend, but I think I might, unless I can get an alternative or a different mindset. That's the first place to stop. And in my bio there, I've got several links. I have a free guide out there for women to download. That free guide can help women know really my top five tips and tricks for creating uh, this life that you don't want to numb out from, where you can literally just even hit the pause button for a day, a weekend, or an event. What if you want to try to go to a wedding sober-minded and not have a hangover the next day and remember everything about it. I've got some tips and tricks that can really help that. But when people start to, to really follow what I'm doing, a lot of women, and I primarily work with women at this next level because it's called the 21 day reset. And that's exactly how I look at it. You know, hitting the reset button is literally just saying, I think I need to realign. I think I need to renew my mind. I think I need some more information so that I can make maybe different choices. And it's always about choice. It's always about empowering freedom and choice. That's mm -hmm. what I get really passionate about. You don't hear someone that's gluten-free or vegan, um, you know, get shamed for their healthy choice or doing what works for their body. And I want alcohol-free living to be the same way. And it's, it's starting to happen. I mean, the change is going on and, and women like yourself who are bringing it more to the forefront are really a part of that. But um, in the 21 day reset, I really have curated the best of what I have found that worked for me. I put my own okay. experience in there. Now I've been doing this for a while. So I've really made that information kind of my own. But at the beginning, it was a lot of me going, that's a great resource. Oh my gosh, read this book, L mm -hmm. watch this pod, listen to this podcast. And, um, I love the 21 day reset because it takes about 21 days to break or change a habit. And so that's why I love the number 21 is three weeks. It's not even a full month. So if women are intimidated by the amount of right. time, it's not even a full month. It's even less than a month. Um, but what happens, and you can attest to this yourself after being in the reset, it's almost like your eyes kind of open to new information that maybe you didn't know before and the community, the sisterhood of women, you didn't realize like I didn't right. until it got going, how many thousands of women struggle with this gray area drinking zone. And then women after the 21 day reset, many of which want to go further and create a more alcohol free lifestyle. The reset afforded them the option to take a break without having to decide always forever. And then my next kind of my next step is AFL, which stands for Alcohol Free Lifestyle Course. And that's a 10 week program where we break it down into more of the pillars that it takes to really maintain and sustain an alcohol free lifestyle where you're thriving, not just surviving. And quite honestly, in that program, we talk very little about alcohol. In the 21 mm -hmm. day reset, it's all about alcohol. Like let's expose it for what it is. Let's put right. it in the middle of the room and like look at it all the different ways we can and then make our choice. In the alcohol-free course, um, it's more about boundaries and uh, self-care and gratitude and the power of connection, knowing how to course correct and, and more of the practical tools on just even how to deal with all the feelings that often are not dealt with when we're kind of numbing out in the evenings. So that's kind of, that's kind of how people can find me. I would say that's kind of the progression, I guess you could say of people just kind of becoming a part of this movement and what's going on. It's certainly a movement. Um, in fact, that's a great segue into my next question. When did you start and like, how have you grown in your, in your community? Cause yeah. you're, you're, you're like a startup and you, you're already incredibly totally. successful. 
because everybody needs it. <laughs> totally. So yeah. Listen, Caroline, and I know you and I've talked about it, but it has been one crazy ride um, because I, <laughs> again, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got a business mind, but I was not really starting this as a business. I was really starting it as just a ministry, as a way to give back into the world, put something good into the world that I myself needed. And so I, I wrote the 21 day reset at the beginning of 2018 and um, put it together in some emails, literally invited my local friends to read them and become part of a Facebook group to talk about them. I had 15 people in my Facebook group and uh, about a dozen people reading those emails that very first month. Um, now, currently at the time of this interview, our Facebook group, private group, meaning people who have done the 21 day reset is over 8,000 strong in just a little over, well, about two years. And so um, it has been, <laughs> it's been a whirlwind. Um, lots of just putting it out there. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is the message resonates. There's no question it resonates. Now it's just getting it out there. So, you know, like anything, you just kind of level up with the needs of what people are asking for. Um, that's kind of been my MO the whole time is how can I serve? How can I support this community of women? What's next has really been primarily built on the feedback that I've been receiving as I've gone. I've really built this based on what people were needing and asking for. And I think that that's, that's really worked well and just attracting amazing, strong, empowered, you know, go getter, just incredible, badass women. I mean, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, really cutting, cutting edge in their field, uh, killing it out there, you know, in corporate America, being the best mom they can be. However, there's this one area of life that is holding them down, that is not aligning, and that is causing them to expend bandwidth, that really, if they could take that same bandwidth and apply it towards living the best life in the best version of themselves then what's possible. And that's what's happening. A lot of women are waking up and it's so exciting. Yeah. I, I, I look at it like if you have four quarters, like in a, in a game, you are addressing people that are in second, third quarter. You know, there's a spectrum there of people that, you know, their drinking is daily, maybe not daily or binge drinking, you know, but it is not one where it's um, dependent they're dependent and, and their lives are a shambles as a result of the drinking. Right. It's all the millions and millions of people in the in-between, right? Is that yes. where I would say really that's the majority of drinkers are in that second and third quarter because mm -hmm. really anyone that drinks alcohol is on that drinking spectrum. You know, mm -hmm. you may be the person out there that's like, yeah, I could take it or leave it. I kind of do a champagne toast at a wedding now and again, and you know, if I'm on an anniversary dinner or a fancy date, I'll have a glass, but I don't really care. Okay, that's neat for you. You're a one. <laughs> on a scale I was going to say, ten. I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, you may be listening. You're on the drinking <laughs> spectrum, and you're like a one or a two. And then, you know, just to go on the other far end, you know, like a 10, if we're talking a scale of one to 10, would be someone that is physically dependent. And that is someone, because it's very serious at that level, because your body can become so accustomed to the alcohol that really it doesn't know what to do without it on a regular throughout the day and night basis, mm -hmm. which is a whole nother ball game. Now we're talking mm -hmm. about medical detox and, and supervision to uh, taper down or to detox. So again, that's, whoa, that's, that's like opposite of the person who drinks a couple of times a year and is indifferent, completely neutral. Right. So those, that's the far end. But like you said, the majority is right smack dab in the middle. Um, and our society promotes that our culture and our society really does kind of say, this is normal. But is it really normal? You know, is it really normal to drink alcohol every day? Is it really normal to have a dozen drinks on a weekend or more? And so, yes. So if I could define a gray area drinker, it would be someone who has the ability, the capability, mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, really physically, though, I would say is the deciding factor to quit or stop on their own. 
um, the majority of women that I work with in sober sis come into the 21 day reset, able to, to just totally hit the pause button, just like you would on a whole 30 or a juice cleanse or something like that. It's like, I can hit the pause button. We work on the mindset. We work on the emotions so that it's not so miserable emotionally or so mentally that tug of war, but physically speaking, they have the ability and capability to stop drinking on their own. And so again, that is the majority of people drinking for sure. So what are uh, some of the tips that you give to help yeah. people get through the urge or, you know, that they're Jones and for that glass of wine, especially in the beginning, you know, it's habit breaking oh, bad habits. Sure. So what are, what are your two top three tips for? Yeah, for, for sure. Well, you mentioned one keyword, which I love to talk about, which is surfing the urge. You mentioned the urge. It's that craving loop. It's that habit loop. It's almost that trigger that says I'm pulling in the driveway. It's been a long day. Did you know we even get a dopamine hit when we open the kitchen cabinet to pull out the wine yeah. glass before we've even put any alcohol in our body? our body is responding to the thought of alcohol and the release that it will give us in that temporary moment. So it's good to know how to surf that because that urge, that craving won't last forever. It feels like it will in the moment, but if you can surf that urge, that means not resist it, not deny it, um, but just acknowledge it. And then just know that this too, like my mom used to tell me when I was little, Jen, this too shall pass and it will. And if your brain can get the signal that it doesn't need it right away, even if you could just wait five minutes and distract yourself, it will lessen. And usually it will go away. I would say 20 minutes, take a walk around the block, change your environment. And that leads me to my other tip is have an alternative. You know, we're all so pre-programmed. I know I am to, you know, have a certain time of day where I love the ritual. I love the, um, the reward loop at the end of the day, right? So there's nothing wrong with wanting a, a pretty drink or a sparkling drink or something refreshing. It just doesn't always have to have alcohol in it. So what if we had an alternative um, on hand ready to go? A lot of this is being prepared and pre-planning and pre-deciding. You know, if you just show up at a happy hour or you just open your kitchen refrigerator and you see all the choices. It's kind of like food. You know, if you just open your refrigerator and all you see is Oreos and ding dongs, but you're trying to eat kale, <laughs> it's not going to work out. You, you got to have the kale in there and it's got to look good. It can't just be in there like thrown down. It's got to, it's got to be appealing. It's got to look good and it's got to create a desire in your mind to really want it. So fortunately for us, uh, those wanting to either drink less or not at all, there are so many options on the marketplace today that give us that alternative that is so truly enjoyable. And you've seen my refrigerator. I know you've seen my French tour. Yeah. yeah. I never feel deprived. I, if anything, I feel overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> like, which one am I going to drink tonight? So that's very empowering and very positive and very exciting. So my brain isn't going into deprivation mindset, scrambling around, feeling like I can't have it. I want it. I can't have it. Mm -hmm. My goal is to say I can have it, but I don't want it. And that, that is the freedom. That is freedom. And how I love it. So wrapping up, is there anything else that you'd like to add? You know, I'm an analogy person. So I'm just going to say, picture this like a highway and you're on it. If you're a drinker, you're on that highway, right? And, and for most of us, drinking has become, again, such a social norm. And with all the stress and craziness of the year 2020, um, has really put people into just a hyper, you know, hyper drive of anxiety, uh, depression, uncertainty, overwhelm. And alcohol really is like pouring gasoline on all those things. And so if you're on the highway and you let's go with the car analogy and you've got some red lights flashing on your dashboard. Okay, you're not crashing and burning. You didn't hit the median. You're not at the end of the highway where it just cuts off. You're on the highway. You're drinking. You know you've got some red warning lights coming on. Maybe you're waking up at 3 a.m. with that wake-up call that says, no, 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 you did it again. And that dread and that feeling of defeat. 
Maybe you're just foggy brain throughout your next day. Maybe you can't kick that 15 pounds. Maybe you feel like you're glassy eyed in front of your kids and that's not good enough for you as a mom. You want to be something different. You want to feel more empowered. Those are red lights, warning lights, yellow lights that are saying, caution, pull over, pop the hood. Let's look at this. Let's just take a gander and see what's really going on. Again, you can get back on the highway. It's not like, you know, you, you don't have to total your car to get it repaired, <laughs> right? So I think pulling over to repair, renew, reset is a best option because then you can feel more clarity. And so listen, if you've got those little flashing lights, you know, don't throw away your car. Don't quit driving. Just pull over and, and be brave and courageous. And really, I think you'll find with our community, with our sisterhood, it's actually quite fun and empowering and positive because it's not like a bad thing to pull over. It's like high five. Good for you. Yeah. But we celebrate that and also realize that it's a unique individual journey. So we're not trying to make it a cookie cutter experience for everybody. We just want to hold the space to figure it out. So if you've got those red lights or warning lights, pull over, join us. Um, don't ignore them because if you do, it's just like your car. If it says check engine or oil low and you just keep mashing the gas, you can keep going for some time. But eventually that will catch up and it is a highway heading one direction. So again, you may get back on it and be in a different lane, but you can, you can slow it down. What a great analogy. Like there's yeah. really nothing more to add to that. That was <laughs> awesome. But I really recommend anybody just jump on the 21 day reset. Um, and are they every month? How does, how does that work? Yes. So the 21 day reset uh, is for sisters only and it starts the beginning of every month. So uh, depending on when you're hearing this, which could be any, any time, um, right. definitely you can start connecting though in between resets, reset months. I have kind of what's called the runway, which means, oh, okay, you're kind of in between uh, takeoff. You're kind of in between the resets, but I don't want women to feel high and dry if it's the 15th of the month and they, they've got the, they, they're going to do it. You know, you, right. over, <laughs> you want to sign up, but you don't want to feel disconnected. You want to feel connected. I do a weekly Zoom call currently going on um, on Wednesday nights where I just make it a connection spot in between resets. So anytime you sign up, for the reset, you can begin connecting with our tribe. It's just been an incredible experience yeah. um, to be part of your 21 day reset. And the people I've met are fantastic from all over the country. And we're, you know, age range, I think from 35 to like 70. That's the other thing. It's just for everybody at any stage of life. Where can people find you? Just go ahead and say it and then I'll have it in the notes as yeah, well. Yeah, sure, sure. So find me on Instagram at SoberSys. Um, but if you want to know the reset, I know Caroline will have a special link below for the reset um, so that you can sign up that way as well. I love it. Thanks, Jen. Have You're a welcome. Great day. This is so Thanks. great. Thanks for having yeah. me. We'll see you again. And okay. this is Caroline with Caroline's Cause Corner. Make it a giving day. <laughs>